Without saying any spoilers, the Nataruk is a weapon unlocked during the New War quest. It boasts some unusual features and incredible statistics, as well as four innate mod polarities. In a nutshell, it's powerful right out of the gate. So how do you mod the Nataruk, and what results can you expect? I'm the Kenjineer, let's solve a practical problem. The first thing anyone will tell you about the Nataruk is the three firing modes it has. Quick, Charged and Perfect. For the Quick, it's a tap shot with very low value. It does have a forced impact proc on every hit, which can be useful if you're trying to coax out mercy kills. Say for example you want to use Hard Reset to get your companion back. The impact proc is otherwise not noteworthy due to the lower overall stats of this basic shot. The Charge Shot is when you draw the bow to its maximum extent and this gives you double the base damage of the quick shot, as well as incredible crits and an enhanced projectile. This projectile gains complete body punch through and is roughly one meter wide, rather than a pinpoint. As a result, the charge shot is absolutely devastating to lines of enemies. Lastly then, the perfect shot has all the same features of a charge shot, except with improved critical stats. The difference in these crits is rather significant, as well as being a faster shot to fire but you're not required to always go for perfection. The loss of the stats between the charge shot from perfect is about the same as losing one pip off both critical delay and vital sense, so the occasional overcharge shot won't kill you. To land the perfect shot, all you need to do is charge up the bow to between two thirds and nearly maximum within this part of the reticle right here. So long as you release the arrow at that point, you get a perfect shot. Now do be aware, both the charged and perfect shots do not have a headshot bonus, so you can simply just aim centre and mass without issue. Results wise, this bow is more than just powerful. It hits about as strongly as the Fulman while having no recharge delay, unlimited range on its projectile, and higher critical stats overall. For normal star chart enemies, this bow just obliterates them with any decent mod setup. So let's instead look at gearing up for the steel path. Some easy slot mods are Critical Delay, Vital Sense, Galvanized Chamber and Hunt Munitions. All of these are incredible for buffing stats and getting more out of the base capability of the Nataruk. Hunt Munitions is especially useful against armor targets, which do feature in every faction at one point or another, so it's a worthwhile pickup. Also for the Arcane, add in the Primary Merciless Arcane for your pure damage boost, as you'll be getting plenty of kills with this bow. On top of these starting mods, the Nataruk benefits highly from increased fire rate, for which a few options do exist. You've got Speed Trigger's bonus of 60%, Vile Acceleration of 90% but with a small damage drop, Vigilante Fervor of 45% with a token critical chance buff, or Prime Shred which is 55% and also 2.2 meters of punch through. Of these, Prime Shred is the best all round. While the Nataruk has innate body punch through, uncharged and perfect shots, it has no penetration of any other type of obstacle, like doors, crates and deployable cover. With Prime Shred, those smaller bits of cover become a non-issue, allowing you to take shots more freely with greater effect. Now, Normal Shred stats are much lower though, so if you don't have Prime Shred, go for Speed Trigger instead. As for Vile Acceleration, I find that's a little too much in the speed department for the firing style of the Nataruk. With that bit done, this leaves us with three mod slots in the main section. Against the Grenier, I recommend Rhyme Rounds, Malignant Force, and either Standard or Primed Bane of Grenier. The viral procs this generates are a significant multiplier to damage that applies to all Grenier units you'll face, and crucially, it also buffs up those slash procs which bypass all armor. Not only that, but the Standard and Prime Bane mods both double dip when it comes to enhancing slash procs, meaning with the Standard Bane you'll gain 69% more damage on those slash procs, or with the Prime Bane, you're gaining 140% more damage. No other single mod can compete with that slot for effectiveness. Against the Corpus though, as Slash Blocks lose a lot of their value, so too does Viral. Instead, you can swap out Rhyme Rounds for Pathogen Rounds, and of course swap out the appropriate Bane mod. The Pure Toxin will annihilate most Corpus units without having to worry about aiming for weak spots. For the few of them that do survive, probably due to armor, the Slash from Hunter Munitions will still make short work of them, again enhanced by that Bane mod. The Bane mod will also be enhancing the Toxin procs you'll be delivering to those enemies, 
So you've now got two sources of damage stripping away at any of those enemies which dare to survive the first shot. As for the infested, most of those just die to any decent build. Of the few that aren't so easy to kill, the majority of those are immune to at least viral procs and sometimes viral damage as well. Instead, modding for corrosive alongside hunter munitions will allow you to handle those armoured units, as well as the status immune units, without having to worry. As it's only a limited number of infested that take any extra work, and some of those are just status immune anyway, you can do away with the Bane mod in favour of Serration. While Serration is an overall weaker choice once you have a fully stacked Arcane, this gives you more damage against the Acolytes as well, in addition to keeping up a higher base damage should you find yourself spending a long time without kills, like when fighting a Juggernaut. If you have it, Amalgam Serration is a perfectly valid swap in for Standard Serration here. With these three setups, you can handle all of the main factions without issue with this bow. Lastly in terms of modding, there's the Exilus slot. If you want just pure damage, you can slot in Vigilante Supplies. This is perhaps the most uninspired idea, because the main mod effect is useless to an infinite ammo bow, and the crit bonus will improve your damage usually only around 2.5%. Instead, you can reform the slot to improve your bow's effectiveness at range by using terminal velocity. The increased projectile speed can make leading shots that little bit easier, though it's not going to make up fully for bad aim. My personal choice, however, is the Hush mod. For some reason, this non-explosive bow has an alarming noise level, making it unsuitable for stealth and especially so for Ivara. By popping on a Hush, the bow becomes silent to enemies, giving you an easier time getting stealth kills and just more in keeping with how a bow should feel. Of course, if you don't give a toot about stealth, then this doesn't matter. So there we have it then, the new and powerful Natarok bow, set up for every major faction. If you have enjoyed this video or learned something new, give the video a like and subscribe as well to catch more as it goes live. I'll often be talking about the topics upcoming for future videos on my live streams over at twitch.tv slash thekengineer, so if you'd like to see more of the experimentation side live, then absolutely check that out. That's all from me for now though, so as always, launch arrows, clear rooms, and fight well Tenno.